I'm Leo Walder for Kick Guru. This is Leo Says, my occasional opinion piece. This apparently is Leo Says 20. It's two weeks to Computex and I've got about five weeks of reviews to do, so that's a problem. Uh, the obvious question when we're heading up to Computex is what's going to be the big announcements about products? NVIDIA, AMD, Intel being the ones that we're really interested in, but there are obviously others as well. And the rumor that keeps on coming around and around is GTX 1180 from NVIDIA or possibly GTX 2080 or whatever the heck it's going to be. Uh, and we know nothing. Uh, the latest rumor that's broken is, you know, this thing of uh, when people benchmark uh, graphics online and they forget to uncheck the box and lo, a figure pops up. Uh, but we've got a conundrum here because we've seen apparently figures for GTX 1180, which apparently is a Turing uh, chip, but the chip appears to be called GV104. V would suggest Volta. So that's two things together there which shouldn't be together. Uh, it would seem, and this might be complete hooey, that it's uh, GTX 1080, but it's gone from 60 nanometer down to 12 nanometer. CUDA core increased from 2560 to 3584. Memory goes up to 16 gigabytes GDDR6. If I was to construct a graphics chip on paper from all the bits and pieces that currently exist, that's exactly what I'd come up with. So that might either be common sense or total rubbish. Uh, and it sounds essentially as though Titan XP is moving down to take the place of what is currently uh, GTX 1080. So absolutely nothing exciting whatsoever except for more performance for the same power and what's not to like, if there's any truth in it. Uh, and I cannot add that enough on this, if there's any truth. There is one, however, sort of grain of you would think, which is that NVIDIA is currently pushing 4K 144 hertz panels. Now these sound like a very good idea, albeit they've already been delayed. They've now started apparently to come through or imminently. Got to get my tenses correct there. Uh, but there has recently been a press event and those panels are coming imminently. Uh, you obviously have to drive a 144 hertz uh, 4K panel. That's an awful lot of pixels to drive. So a Titan XP or equivalent of on next gen process would make perfect sense. Now, here's the thing. Will it be at Computex itself? I would have thought not actually, apart from the fact it's uh, very, very soon. And at the least I'd have thought NVIDIA would have had to start sending out uh, uh, invitations to press events, albeit NVIDIA is the type of company that could announce it at 12 hours notice and people still turn up. But soon after Computex, we have E3. So it wouldn't surprise me were NVIDIA to do uh, a graphics announcement after Computex, perhaps at E3, uh, the GTX 1080 was done at DreamHack. And then you'd be looking at an actual launch sort of in Q3 and then you're into that run up to Christmas thing. So that seems plausible to me, but I wouldn't want to go and bet any money on it. And if Turing stroke Volta for the desktop really is Titan XP after all this time, well, OK, but by goodness me, that's incremental improvements to say the least. On the subject, however, of graphics, uh, we reviewed a month ago now uh, the Gigabyte Aero 15X laptop, and we've just reviewed the MSI GS65, two very similar laptops, both using 8th gen Intel uh, Core i7 processors, so that's the Coffee Lake technology, and both using NVIDIA GTX graphics, either 1060 or 1070 Max Q. And a customer, a potential customer on the Overclockers UK forum asked a question along the lines of if I buy this laptop for around two thousand pounds is it going to become obsolete in the near future this you'll appreciate a laptop that's just launched that is still being shipped over from uh, China uh, the first batches have arrived and sold out and we're looking for resupply uh, and the first batch would not have been you know numbered in the thousands so uh, early early days and the response from uh, a chap at Gigabyte UK on this forum Really, what, what choices did he have? He could have ignored the question, obviously, but this is a potential customer looking to spend £2,000, so that would be rude. He could have said something like, sure, you could buy it, but who knows, it might be junk tomorrow, which isn't very reassuring. Or he could make an informed observation, and it seems he made an informed observation, which was something along the lines of, current plans say NVIDIA won't have a new mobile GPU for two quarters, which would take us to the end of 2018. Uh, I around about the time of CES 2019, as that's you know, a very few days into 2019, and the world went basically nuts. 
And yet, if we rewind to that uh, first thought about whatever the heck the new chip is, GTX 1180 or whatever the, uh, let's say it is 12 nanometer uh, NVIDIA chip, if that comes on the desktop in Q3 with sales hitting us in, uh, in time for Christmas, when would you expect there to be a mobile version of it? It might be immediate, it's possible, but it doesn't seem very likely. These things, it generally takes the mobile longer to come through, say another quarter. So turn of the year, stroke CS 2019 would make perfect sense. Uh, therefore, it is two quarters away. Therefore, if you think six months life for a new laptop, obviously your new laptop bought now is not gonna be junk. It's just conceivably gonna be superseded. But if the new chip that's coming is GTX 1180, uh, then what would that mean? That that would mean that your next graphics chip would in your laptop would be the equivalent of GTX 1070 would have the power draw of 1060 or whatever. You know, we're talking incremental improvements. Certainly it wouldn't put me off buying a new laptop now. Not, not for that reason. And as we know, Intel 8th gen has only just come out. If you're on a laptop that's got six cores rather than four cores, yeah, go for it. So what can you possibly say when you ask a sensible question and the response comes back in a perfectly sensible manner and everyone jumps forward to, oh nvidia's not doing this or they are doing that it's it's awkward really and you have to pity the poor customer uh, perhaps the thing to do actually is to be entirely uh, ignorant that would be the best bet i think you see a new shiny thing you buy the new shiny thing and you're happy if you buy a new shiny thing today of course it's going to be obsolete in time that's common sense six months no i can't think of a well kb lake i suppose potentially actually Hmm. Perhaps a poor choice of words. It would seem to me a laptop with Intel 8th gen CPU and the current NVIDIA technology in it, even if it gets replaced by something in the nearish future, it's going to be a perfectly decent piece of hardware for some years to come. But uh, there we go. Uh, as ever, responding to rumours in the open about NVIDIA is uh, fraught. And on that subject, jumping ahead to a thing I've got written down here. Um, so GPP is dead happily, apparently. And yet it seems that MSI is launching a range of uh, AMD graphics cards called Mech 2. Now you have to think a new brand and all the bits and pieces associated with it took more than five minutes. So either they've been really quick off the mark and they've kind of arrived after the party has finished or GPP is running an awful lot longer than we had any idea. And this has all been in the works for months and months on end and bless them. MSI is now delivering these Mech 2 graphics cards just as it would seem that the need is uh, non-existent. Nonetheless, the fact NVIDIA tells us GPP is dead, uh, who knows? I mean, the fact it's not called GPP, I'm sure the thinking is there. I'm sure they would love this to be the way of the future, all these AMD exclusive brands and they get the good stuff. Depressing, depressing. This is one of the big stories of 2018. It's, uh, it's going to hang over us for a good long while yet. On the subject of graphics, another rumor, Intel Arctic Sound and Intel Jupiter Sound. There's a suggestion that Intel's gonna have a graphics chip that might make it into a proper graphics card, a discrete GPU. Now, I've been hearing these rumors for 15 years or so, and they've always been rubbish. I mean, Nvidia just has never made a decent graphics core that actually stands the test of time and can become a graphics card in its own right. They just haven't managed it. Uh, so the rumor associated with this is that they might be launching a graphics card at CES 2019. Now here's the thing, Intel has just launched a CPU package with AMD Vega graphics on board. Uh, they've put the two things together with um, an interconnect and early reports are that it's very good. Well, I've not seen it myself yet, I'd actually like to have a play without thinking about it. But they did not make this chip themselves. Indeed, AMD made them, they didn't just design them and supply the design to Intel. They made the chips and supplied them. Intel packaged the two together. The idea that now Intel can suddenly manufacture its own graphics chips, I, I just cannot see this. Uh, furthermore, because obviously the associated name of this is Raja. Uh, Raja was employed by Intel now a few months ago. How quickly can you deliver a graphics chip? Unless Intel basically had a finished design in the works and they're already prototyping it and putting it through the fabs and seeing how it worked out and it was already a good piece of work, then I cannot begin to comprehend how they could possibly have such a thing ready for CES 2019. And if they did have such a thing ready, then who designed it? Who was the architect? We have heard of no Intel graphics architect. Well, I certainly haven't. And when someone can do a thing like that, a, a a big thing like that, they generally, their, their name is associated with the work. 
Uh, also, if Intel had such a person that could do such a thing, then why would they bother employing Raja? I mean, that would seem to me entirely unnecessary because Raja's coming as the big graphics uh, person. Uh, and yet it would seem that there is some wizard at Intel who's already... So Intel does not have such a wizard, I, I would say. Therefore, Raja is necessary. And um, whatever Raja is working on surely cannot conceive be ready for a CS 2019. Uh, so perhaps he's working on associating uh, AMD graphics cores as already with the Vega and the Intel 8th gen. Uh, the next step on from that, that would make perfect sense, integrating them better, developing them, blah, 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 blah. But the idea of a new graphics chip with an Intel name on it made by Intel coming out, uh, if such a thing happens and interesting stuff, I mean, surely two or three years would be lightning speed. And that would be if you had some sort of design you could evolve and work on from scratch. Just doesn't, I, I can't see it. Just simply cannot see it. Of all the rumors I've heard in recent times, that strikes me as really peculiar. Uh, so Arctic Sound, Jupiter Sound, they are certainly names, but as to what exactly they stand for and what they mean, that we'll have to see. The idea that they are anything more than some form of Intel integrated graphics and they become a discrete GPU, I just cannot see it. AMD, so at Computex, if AMD does not announce the uh, second gen Threadripper, that would be a true shock. They are apparently already sampling second gen Threadripper. This came up in some recent uh, finance call. So we have to assume that they will have 2900X, 2920X, 2950X, so 8, 12, and 16 cores on the, on the uh, 12 nanometer process they've already used in second gen Ryzen. Hopefully the speed will be north of four gigahertz. That's it. I mean, Precision Boost 2, you'd hope, so it can handle overclocking better. But my one concern there is that the second gen Ryzen 7s, their power draw is quite uh, quite a bit higher than the original Ryzen's because they're basically working more of the time. If your Threadripper's working more of the time and is uh, even more juicy and even hotter, that's not great. Having said that, my own Threadripper system is up and running. I've had it running now for a couple of weeks. That's the 12 core version. It's got a proper full custom loop on it, uh, just the CPU, not on the GPU. And that runs nice and cool. When I'm doing um, outputs from Premiere, I'm looking at 45 degrees C and it runs around the 26, 28 uh, day to day. Uh, so there's certainly potential for Threadripper, no two ways about it. And if the second gen Threadripper comes along and is pin compatible TR4, and I assume it will be, absolutely I want one of those just as quickly as possible. This is something that I personally want, but although I want it and it's a good thing, uh, it doesn't sound exciting. I don't think that's a contradiction in terms. I think that, I think that logically follows. What else AMD is going to have at Computex on the other hand? Apart from sort of Radium Pro type stuff and Pro laptop stuff about which I really cannot get excited. Uh, I really do not know. And we also have the question of what Intel is going to do at Computex. And on this score, it's been as silent as the grave, which could well mean that Intel is just busy basically fixing Spectrum meltdown. Intel recently announced the Z390 chipset, and that looked like it was a kind of slip. Uh, and basically it's Z370, except it's got USB 3.1 Gen 2, so just like the other lesser graph uh, the, the other lesser chipsets it announced quite recently. So it did uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 and 8211 AC uh, Wi-Fi Wave 2. Well, okay. Uh, in and of itself, I mean, big yawn. So Z370 becomes Z390. The thing that would obviously make a difference is if we get an eight core coffee lake, presumably associated with Z390. But that's going to have a problem because then that's going to mean anyone that's got a Z370 in the six core coffee lake, uh, presumably there'll be a cutoff and you won't be able to you know, plug in the new processor. Uh, so you're going to have the upgrade path knackered once again. People have spent quite a decent sum of money with Intel because suddenly you're going to find they're being asked to spend yet more money. Um, if, if there's an uh, eight core Core i7, then does it mean the current six cores are going to drop in price or is the eight core going to come in at a premium? Considering that uh, the Ryzen 7s are actually pretty cheap, uh, remains to be seen. And also the question of speeds. If the eight core, if an eight core comes in, will that run slower than the six core or will the new, if there is a new eight core, come in at the same speed as the current six core? That would be impressive after we were cramming in the extra 33% of cores, which is a doubling from where we were a very few months ago. That's entirely speculative, but it does sound potentially interesting because otherwise that Z390 chipset is just the dullest thing since the dullest of dull things has ever happened. It'd be absolutely dreadful. Have a new motherboard and it's got different USB. 
brilliant thanks uh, so we have to trust there's an associated processor if there isn't then what's intel doing at computex i mean sure they must they must have something uh question is what uh so we're gonna have to wait and see and we haven't got wait, long to wait but uh right now yeah and in terms of uh, minor bits of news that might be more significant than they seem but evga is ditching driver discs in favor of flash drives well good I mean, and apart from that, EVGA does both uh, graphics cards and also motherboards, so drivers are actually quite important. But uh, I would have thought the smart move in this day and age was for hardware to actually have some sort of uh, associated bit of software that as soon as it installs, it goes online, looks for the latest stuff and updates the bias of your hardware, if that's relevant, or firmware, uh, download software and so on and so forth. The idea you have to plug in anything at all, I find absolutely crazy. But again, I, I haven't used uh, an optical disc in uh, years. I mean, I occasionally burn CDs for a friend who requires the odd bit of music they need to take somewhere. But for my own personal use, CDs, dead and a dead thing. USB, yeah, of course that's better. I mean, that, that's what we use these days. Nonetheless, surely we've moved on. Surely the idea in 2018, mid-2018, it's time to put drivers on flash drives. Well, okay, but there has to be a smarter move than that, doesn't that? Anyway, EVJ, well done. It's a good move, but it does seem like it's terribly overdue. Anyway... Computex is coming, rumours will abound, I hope, uh, and then soon we'll have some solid news and we can move on with the next phase of the year, the second half of 2018. Surely there's got to be some good stuff coming and I'm looking forward to this. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Git Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button, you'll be alerted to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Warder for Git Guru. This is Leo Says.